Whoa. Whoa. It's the illusion reporting from somewhere on space, ship, Earth. Doing a little sound check here. Sound check. How? What's the sound like? I got a new microphone. How's the new microphone sound? Is it good? Is this a good spot for it? Because we're about we're about to change things up a little bit here. So I need to get I need to get a. Uh, I need to get a uh, sounds good. We sound good. Sound we sound crisp. We sound crisp. All right. Let me let me get this thing going then. Whoa. This is the illusion reporting from somewhere on spaceship Earth. You know, every now and then it's time for a change, right? And you realize you've been doing things, I don't know, in the in the standard way. And you realize that the standard way just isn't working anymore, right? You just sort of realize it's not working anymore. So about a year ago, I got this microphone sent to me with a microphone stand and the whole thing, but the, there's a little bolt on the, on the, on the stand. So I can't get the microphone cord to hook into the thing. And I'm like, oh, I got to grind the thing off. I got to grind, grind the thing off. And I just haven't done it. So, uh, I fully like, I fully realized something the other day. I fully realized something the other day. And you know what I realized the other day? I don't want to sit anymore. I want to be free. I want to stand. I need to get liberated, right? Because this weird thing we do in, in YouTube live streaming, we all just sit here. We all sit here, but I don't sit here when I talk to people. I move around, man. I get in motion. I get fired up. When I talk to people out in the real world, I'm moving and stuff. So I realized that this new microphone I got here gives me the freedom to move around. Look at, look at this range I got back here. I get all the way back here in the corner of my room. Boom. And I can just drive it on home, dude. I can just drive it on home. So, and it's heavy. It's got weight, dude. It's got weight, dude. Gets me fired up, man. It gets me fired up because the transition's here, man. All of it's happening. So I'm like, well, what am I doing? What am I doing in the transition period of this whole thing? I'm just sort of sitting here, just sitting here talking on the screen. But like, that's not all I am. Like, I, like there's a new character emerging inside of me. I can feel it. I can feel it coming, man. And I don't really know what it's going to be yet. But I realize this character inside of me is tired of sitting, dude tired of sitting. Isn't that the metaphor? Isn't that the metaphor for what we're all experiencing? We've been sitting idle for quite some time and it's time to get up, yo, get up and get ready. I don't know if it means moving around. That, that's kind of a little bit annoying. I got to get, but I, I just realized that I don't want to sit anymore. And not that I like sit in general reality, but I want to stay amped, right? And I need to get moving. And I don't really know what that means, except I was listening. So, all right, where, where's the title of this? Uh, this uh, where does the title of this come from? I can hit a target with a telescope. So the other day I was sitting here talking on the live stream. And I was talking about riding bikes with the, with the children. And I was talking about how I was riding the bikes with the children. And, and one of the things Al's always like, keep your hands on the, on the handlebars. And I was riding down the thing and I was riding without handlebars, right? I wasn't riding with any handlebars. And I was talking about it. And I was like, you know what great song is? It's called Handlebars. And, and so I went and I, I pulled it down out of the archives. And I was like, dude, Handlebars by the Flowbots. I hadn't listened to it in a decade. I hadn't listened to it to a decade of this song. And dude, if, if it isn't all laid out in that one track, the whole progression from just the seed to the insanity in one track, the progression of it's pretty radical. And I highly recommend just go listen to the Flowbots Handlebars God, it's got to be 10, 12 years old. 
so then I was like listening to it, man. I got all fired up on it, man. I got all fired up on the potential because the, the song's all about, you know, you get, you begin to build potential and most people are unchecked. And so their potential is ultimately leads to just destruction, man. And, and that's why like, it's like this period we're in is super like important, not to end in destruction, right? Make peace with your shadows, right? Because most people don't realize the, the, that the destroyer is inside of them. It's not outside. It's not some other person. It's not some institution. It's not some satellite. It's not some dude with glasses. It's not some weird stuff in a syringe, dude. The enemy is within. It's within inside of all of us. But see, the enemy can't manifest until it gets you to be successful at whatever it may be just successful in whatever your endeavor is. And then you get to flip your lunatic switch because you haven't realized that you are the destroyer, right? And so I, I was I was listening to the song, right? I was getting all fired up on it. I was like, oh yeah, dude, I remember this tune. I remember how radical this tune was when I first heard it 10 years ago or 12 years ago, however long it was. And I haven't heard it in so long. And I flipped it on. I got chills. I was like, oh, boy. Oh, boy, dude. They're laying it down. And then I then I pulled up the album cover, dude. And the album cover, the album cover. Let me see. Uh, let's see if I can pull this off. I got the uh, the podcast thing streaming. I don't know if the audio is going to do good on that. But whatever. We're all in experimental mode right now. We are We are figuring out the new flavor, dude. So this is the album cover from this album that has a track that lays it all down. This, this album is no less than a decade old. This is the album cover. That is the album cover. Look at that. What? 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 See, this is all. This is all. Everything that's going on now has been programmed. We are living in some sort of like weird holographic self self-fulfilling matrix man and it's gnarly because we have to take responsibility for what we're doing but it's super hard because you know inside of it all we're just like we're uh we're like those crazy monkeys at the beginning of 2001 space odyssey but see we think that it's the the monolith is some some thing some tangible object the monolith is a thought the monolith is a thought. See, I think that's what the whole 2001 Space Odyssey was about. It wasn't about like about technology or tactile things. It was about monolithic thinking, monolithic thinking. And so here we are, man. We've all been stuck in monolithic thinking, which is the thinking that, that any of this has any relevance to who we are as superheroes. See, we're all gnarly superheroes, aren't we? We are all gnarly superheroes. But see, most of us are afraid to fly, man. Most of us are afraid to get out our sparkles and our bandanas and our crazy gloves with the tassels on them and our big belt buckles and our crazy shoes and whatever it is that a superhero needs to be a superhero, right? Because, you know, Jimi Hendrix, right? Think about Jimi Hendrix just for a second. Did anyone look at Jimi Hendrix, what Jimi Hendrix wore? See, I was always impressed with his music, but what always really blew my mind about Jimi Hendrix were his outfits, dude. His outfits were the, were the thing of superheroes and legends, dude. See, Jimi Hendrix knew how to let his freak flag fly, man, with this upside-down guitar and his just trippy vibe, dude. But more so, he wore it on his sleeve, right? He wore it on his sleeve. And yet, see, we still live in that thing of, of squareness. Like, we're all, like, I'm captive of it too, man. That's what I mean. That's what I mean about what I'm saying. Is like, I, it suddenly hit me yesterday, like, like with this microphone cord. I was like, I'm just sitting in a chair. I don't want to sit in a chair. I don't want to sit in a chair in my mind either, man. I want to get out of my mind. And see, this whole thing that's been going on this last year, it's been an exercise of mind. See, this whole year, we had to go back. See, we were, if we use the 2001 Space Odyssey, it's sort of like a, a Tarantino plot. Like the beginning of the story, we start in the spaceship, right? Battling Hal. We started in the spaceship battling Hal. And then, and then we became 
the monkeys in the monolith, right? We've gone backwards. We've gone backwards in time and space because right before, right before all this started, we were battling Hal. We were in there getting ready to remove the chip or whatever it is that that homeboy does to, to take Hal out, right? And they went and just zapped us right back to to the crazy monkey thought. Monkey thought, fear, fear, fear. And then the, the, the converse of fear is like, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I'm fear, I'm fear, I'm fear. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. All of those are monolithic thoughts, right? Because if you truly check in in what God was trying to tell us, what all the spiritual teachings have been trying to tell us, it's like we're multidimensional, high frequency, just intergalactic beings. We're not monoliths. But yet we have monkey mind mentality. We have this thing going on in our head that says all this that we know to be true. Ah, it's a little crazy, dude. It's a little off the cuffs. It's a little bit much. Is it, is it really true? Is it really true? Because we're looking at our fellow monkeys jamming around the monolith, banging it with sticks going, I don't know, dude. Everybody else seems to be a monkey with the stick banging a monolith. But see, we got to be the monkeys with the jawbone, dude. We got to be the monkeys with the jawbone and smash that thought. Smash that little thought in our head that says, do we don't get out of the freak flag. We got to go, man. We got to go, right? And it's hard, right? Because I'm even, i even right here like, ah, it's a bit much, dude. It's a bit much. But I, I realized like, what am I doing, dude? I'm not letting my freak flag fly. I'm not letting my freak flag fly at all. Evolution of thought is not a scam though. See, that's what, again, is, is, is everything's backwards. Everything's inverted. See, we're supposed to evolve within our minds, but see what they did to us, what they did to us was trick us in thinking that the evolution had something to do with our physical form, right? So if you get into the whole thing that they were trying to, trying to tell us, dude, is that, oh, we evolved from like, like, protozoa and a fish and a climbed out of the sea and became like lizards. And then we turned into monkeys and now we're human beings. See, that's all attachment to form. That's all attachment to the three dimensions and the five senses, dude. But the evolution they don't want us to think about is our thought process, dude, about how we become interdimensional galactic warriors, dude through our minds, man, not through our bodies, dude. See, they got everybody thinking they need to go to the gym. They need to buy some fancy car. They even need to get a new outfit, right? But it's all up here, man. It's all up here where the evolution needs to occur. And see, that's the tough gig, right? Because within our mind, we have all sorts of circuit breakers built in there. We got ego. We got pride. We got fear. We got shame. We got self-aggrandizement we've got we've got i'm rad you're not we've got left right we got all these thoughts rolling around in our head man and all those thoughts make us just sit down and be like wow that's exhausting man like what am i gonna do what am i gonna do with all of this truth inside of me man it's probably easier just to stfu right just just sit down stfu dude don't don't be the don't be the nail you'll get the hammer dude but then again you realize why be a nail? Why not be molten metal? Why not be all the nails, dude? Why not be the molecules? Why not? It's like that thing is like just that's why this song, the this Flowbot song just kind of blew my mind because it does this progression from like a, a, a single thought, just a dude riding around with no handlebars and realizing if you can ride a bike with no handlebars, what else can you do? Right. Because as, as a dude who's teaching a child to ride a bike, right? Like we forget, like I just get on a bike, I ride it, dude. I wave my hands in the air, no big deal, do my own thing, right? But then you got to teach a child to ride a bike, right? And you're like, oh, wow, dude. Like, yeah, I will do the little push bike thing. Well, and then you transition the bike and the training wheels, and he's scared and like, oh my God, there's bushes coming out, and he falls and the slams, and then the training wheels, and then you battle your kid, like, come on, man, you can do it. And he's like, nah, I'm not down with that, dude. Like, whatever, dude, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then he gets up there, he gets his first ride on the bike. I remember I was down at the, uh, at the park. I was down at the park, and I was like, the first first push off that when he first broke free of the training wheels i'm like you're free now you're free now you're free now right 
But then you get more freedom, right? Because you can ride a bike with no handlebars. You just got to pedal, right? You just got to pedal. But see, that, 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 that ability to, to ride, to, to be from a baby born in the womb and then, then do this progression to where you're riding a bike with no handlebars. And that's crazy, dude. If you really think about it for a minute and just get back, because like I have that little guy right there. I can be like, wow, man, it is not easy to learn how to ride a bike, dude. You got it. You got, like I watch him, dude. I'm like, oh my God, this dude could go down at a minute. He was jamming the other day. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He was right. He was like riding real. He was going super fast. And we were doing this big circle. And I go, he doesn't know about the pedal hitting the ground yet, does he? Like if he leans in too much while he's pedaling super fast, the pedal hits the ground and you slam, right? He didn't know about that yet. He hasn't learned about the slamming, dude. The going down, dude. See, in order to raise your hands and go go handlebar free on a bike, you got to know about the slamming, dude, the eating it, the, the smashing into the ground, the gravity, the whole thing, right? So you get to this place where you're finally free. I don't need handlebars. I don't need handlebars on my bike. I can ride a bike with no handlebars, right? So you, you realize that. So the song's all about that is such a gnarly thing to be. Once you can ride a bike with no handlebars, you can do anything you want, right? And so it's the evolution from that thing. And ultimately, it just leads to the final thing is I can end the world in a Holocaust. Because you can. See, the human being, we have the ability to push the button. We have, we, see, it is because we're cowards. And I speak for myself that we don't push the button, right? Right. And the button they talk about in all the spiritual teachings, the button is the facade of the whole thing, right? When you truly go back to what it's all about, none of this exists. This is all fake. But see, we're so afraid to realize that it's fake. Stop using we. I'm so afraid to realize that it's fake, even though I know it's fake, right? I know it's fake. I know all this is fake. I know, I know it's all fake, yet I know if I fully kick this chair with my foot i'll probably break it the chair or my foot one or the other either way my foot's gonna hurt dude right but those th but those dudes those those sensei judo karate guys with the guy thing they know it's fake you think those dudes are actually like breaking gnarly things with their hands no, they're breaking the energy field, dude, that's just snapping before their hands because their hand is coming with such gnarly, gnarly, super, super gnarly, just multi-dimensional force. It just blows the whole thing apart, right? See, but but I'm still attached to my form, right? Still attached to the form, man. I live in the form, dude. Here it is, man. Uh, oh, that hurts, right? That hurts, but it's not real. It's not real because I'm a skateboarder, right? I know this isn't real, but it gets real, real. You know, plenty, plenty of skateboarders know how real it is because they're, uh, you know, they're not here anymore because they smashed their head on the concrete. So what I'm getting at is this thing, right? That the evolution is of thought. The evolution is of thought. But what's the thought? What is the thought? It's God, right? It's God. God's the thought. The thought that can't be described. The God that, that the best thing we can do is use three letters to describe the thought. God. God. That, and that's, that's Western, man. They, some of them, Jehovah. What are the Muslims? Allah. Oh, Buddha. I don't know. He's got a name for it, too. The whole thing, right? So we're trying to we're trying to discover this describe this thought and this thought is beyond description. This thought is so multidimensional, so deep we can see it in the uh, weaving its way through the fabric of everything, dude. This thought. And the best we can do is is call it God, right? And God's like, "Yeah, dude, I'll help you out with that thought. I'll help you out with that thought. How about I send a son, how about I send my son down there, dude?" And he, and and he sends Jesus down here, right? <laughs> God's thought. God's thought sends, then sends a messenger down here, right? To show us, to show us that like our thought is so big, so beyond, so all-encompassing 
but we, we, we're such monkey minds, right? We're so, so like caught in this like little thing that we're in, this little body form, five cents thing. That he's got to send down Jesus, right? And Jesus got to be like, look, dude, you guys get, they don't really get what's going on down here, but you can do anything you want, dude. How about I do some fishes and loaves for you, dude? How about I, how about I feed everybody with like a fit, a couple fish and some loaves, dude? How about I make some water into wine? How about I do that trick with the, uh, is he, is he the one who does the trick with the pigs, man? It makes the pigs run off the cliff or is that the uh, old Testament? That pig off the cliff thing's pretty gnarly, dude. But what you get into this thing, right? And then you go, all right, man. And people are like, okay. And everybody's like, all right. Like, yeah, dude, I get it. You can do some magic tricks. See, they think that Jesus is doing magic tricks. Like, uh, it's just optical illusions, the whole thing. And, Whoa, 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 whoa. And, and and the real believers are like, that, those aren't optical illusions, dude. That's the son of God, dude. Rolling hard, dude. Rolling hard. So, so what, so what does Jesus got to do? Jesus got, I got to like show these people like the real deal, dude, the real thought, the real truth. I got to help them evolve from their little monkey mind banging on the monolith of thought. Right. I got to show them what, what liberation and freedom is truly about. Right. So he's like, all right, dude, I'm going to do the ultimate trick. I'm going to fully get crucified here by these freaks down here. I'm going to let the freaks crucify me because you know what? Psh, I'm God's son, dude. I know this. Do you know this? So he gets, he gets nailed to the cross and pierced and, ah, and, and, he, and he dies, right? He dies. But see, Jesus knew, knew what, what, what God already knew. That's why God sent him down here. It's like, he's going to resurrect him, dude. Just be like, boom, I'm back. You get it now. You get it now. See, that's the thing. Most people get all like wacky about the, uh, about the Jesus getting nailed to the cross, dude. See the Jesus getting nailed to the cross. Like, anyone can do that, man. Anyone can get nailed to the cross. We're nailing ourselves to the cross constantly with fear, with possessions, with, 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 with bad relationships, with drug addiction. We're just constantly just pounding nails into our wrists and our feet. And we're like, oh, I can do it, dude. Just like Jesus did, I can do it too, dude. But the real rub is the resurrection, right? The real rub is the resurrection. And that's God's job, dude. So, you know, God resurrects the Jesus. You go, hey, man, look, check it out, dude. All this stuff down here, man, in this lower dimension. It's, it's meaningless, dude. It's meaningless. Do you believe in me? Do you believe in me? And if you do, man, will you give up your bag of garbage? Man, that's all I ask you to do is just like roll into me and tell me the truth. Like, think about that. Think about how like what being born again really is. It's just telling God the truth. Telling God the truth. There's no dress code. I mean, these other, these other sects of, of Christianity would be like, ah, oh, it's a dress code, dude. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dress on sun Sunday and you gotta dress here and you gotta dress there and you gotta wear a tie and you gotta do this and you gotta do that. See, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't read the dress code in the whole thing. I'm pretty sure it's the exact opposite. There is no dress code. In fact, if you really get down to what it was about, we weren't even supposed to have to need clothes. We were supposed to be like freely rolling in the garden of Eden in our, in our, in our, beautiful natural form not being ashamed of it because we had lust right being able to hang with 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 our counterparts in 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 our naturalness and not want to just jump on their bones dude right but see we lost that dude see we lost that's why we got to wear the clothes right because you know the woman is attractive. The man is attractive. The human form is attractive. It's mating. It's procreation. It's it's DNA. It's this whole thing living on. But everyone's all jammed up about it, all weird about it. Like, ah, ah. So you get to this thing, right? So all, all God asks, right? All God asks is you just come to him and be like, hey, I have a bunch of bad stuff I've been doing down here in this lower dimensional world, right? See, that's the, that's the thing. That's the, the minute you're willing to take it and break free of the monolith of thought. Cause the only reason you won't tell God the truth is because you're afraid, right? Cause you're afraid. Cause you think God's going to judge you, dude. But God's like, I'm not going to judge you, dude. You're my perfect being, dude. I created you in my image and I sent my only son down here to show you how much I love you. 
Cause you can go and nail yourself to the cross too, dude. And in fact, I will resurrect you, dude, but you've got to come to me and tell me why you're nailing yourself to the cross, dude. Well, I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. Jesus like, all right, man, I get it. I see all of it down here, dude. I see the freaks and the weirdos. I see the real evil people. I see the people pretending to be good, dude. I see the preachers. I see the preachers talking about me smoking meth and getting with kids in the background. I see all that. I see you too. I see you too. And I'm telling you, you don't have that much. The only sin you got is, is, is really your inability to come to me. And I already know the truth. I just need you to come before me and tell me the truth. Think about how simple the task is to be saved, right? Think about how simple it is. All you got to do is tell God the truth and ask for forgiveness, right? You don't, you don't gotta, you don't gotta make a skyscraper. You don't, you don't have to make a spaceship. You don't have to make anything. You don't have to make a baby. You don't have to make a million dollars. You don't have to make, you don't have to do anything except come to God and go, dude, I'm a sinner, dude. Will you forgive me? And God's like, dude, I got you. I got you, man. Woman, man, woman. I got both of you. I got everybody. Let's go. Let's go. And see, we sit here and, and this is, I'm talking again, me, there, any we, me thing. I'm, I'm really talking. I got to stay. It's about, I can only speak for myself, right? I can't speak for you. So, so I get, I get the blessing of God, right? I come to God. I admit my sins. I get born again. M almost all of my, my, my failings disappear. Ah, the pornography has gone. Ah, the drug addiction's gone. Ah, the alcoholism gone. The lying's gone. The, 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 the adultery gone. Like when I was never my thing. Anyhow, I wasn't that kind of a dude, the, the promiscuity gone. All of this, the, this, this coveting is gone. The lust for is gone, dude. I still sin constantly. One of my biggest sins I do is giving, going to God and just being like, Oh, I'm bunny, bunny ears, spiritual bunny ears, man. Spiritual bunny ears is one of my biggest sins is denying God his glory, dude, right? Denying God all of his glory and sitting here being confused, being confused because see, left to my own devices, I'm just a monkey banging on the monolith. I'm just a monkey sitting here just going, <laughs> but you know what? I don't have to. And it's not that I don't have to. It's that I don't need to. See, I forget all the time. I forget all the time what it is. See, that's my one of my sins, right? It is, is I forget about God. I forget what God bestowed upon me. I forget the blessings and the abundance and the grace and all that stuff. And I go back to being the monkey banging on the monolith. Ooh, 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 ooh. But see, God talks to me. See, the one thing that I've learned in this journey of mine is that God talks to me constantly. God talks to me because, right, God's in control of everything, right? God's in control of all this lower dimensional stuff, all this higher dimensional stuff. But God gives us free will, right? God gives us free will. He lets the tree grow. He lets the sun rise. He lets the moon do its thing. He lets the planets be round or flat, whatever it is, dude, for you. I don't know. So one of the things God's doing too is he's like, bro, I'm talking to you constantly, constantly. I'm talking to you. And, and, and sometimes it's that simple moment of watching the bumblebee pollinate a flower, right? Like, oh, there it is. And if you're aware enough, if you're, if you're free enough, you can be like, oh my God, look at that. Look at, look at the glory and the grace of, of the bumblebee pollinating the flower. Wow. Look at that, dude. And you can see it sometimes on, on, in, in the chaos of the world that's going on. Like, oh, wow. Look at that, man. Look at that. Wow. Look, only God could orchestrate that insanity. Right. And then you get to see like the, the devil trying to be as clever and crafty as God, dude. Right. But the thing is, 
the one thing that I truly know is to not try to figure out where the signal from God's coming in, right? So I don't know, but I do, right? When the song, when the handlebar thing shows up, right? When the handlebar thing shows up, I don't blow it off. I don't quite get it at first. I don't get what I'm telling myself. I'm talking to you because God gave me this too, dude. This is all God in action right here. I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the handlebar thing and ah, that Flowbot song. Yeah, whatever, dude, whatever, ah, whatever. And then the other day, it just like the light bulb went off. It was just like, listen to that song. Listen to that song. I don't know where the voice came from. I don't know where it was just like, listen to that song. And I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to that song, man. And I put that song on and I was like, oh, I got it. It's already here. It's already in la- inlaid into the code. It's that thing. Duncan, one of those dudes that, that one of Joe Rogan's side people, dying, it's Duncan Trussell, talks about how every now and then he can see the code of the matrix like falling apart in the sky. Dude, he can see holes in the sky where the matrix can't fill in the code quick enough, right? So if God controls everything in all dimensions, time and space and everywhere, right? Everywhere God controls, right? Of course, of course, look at it. Of course, these dudes made an album and told us everything. They told us everything. They told us everything, right? There it is. See, that's where the thing is. Do those dudes know exactly? They probably had a reason why they got all the face mask bandanas on their face with American flags. Whenever they made that album, but see that album was made for me today or yes, last night when I heard it, dude, sure. It was made 12 years ago or whenever, however many years ago it was, but see God's like, I'm going to drop that, drop that track. And you're going to hear it back in the day when you're all loaded and be like, oh, it's pretty wild song, man. I I dig this tune, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to have it, dude. I I think I had it somewhere, dude. And something. And then, and then years later, dude, you're just going to be on some Saturday night going to get, what was I going to get? I was going to get cucumbers, uh, pepper jack cheese and, and, and ginger lemonade. I was going to the market. Like, I'm going to get some pepper jack cheese. And you know, the wife was like, we go get that stuff. And I'm like, all right. And I was like, let me put the, let me get this Flowbot song on my, on my, on my, on my, uh, whatever these things are called, my tracking device. Let me listen to some music on my tracking device. I want to listen to the Flowbot song, right? And dude, I heard it and I was like, oh, wow, the code. I just downloaded data right into the side of my head, like bling. And I was like, oh, oh, I got it. And at the same time, I find this thing. I'm like, oh, I got it. I got it. I got to get up. I got to stand up. It's like that thing, right? When you're like the psychedelics, will know what I'm talking about. When I talk about this, like you'll be out there tripping and doing your thing and you'll be off somewhere in some place. And there'll be like a moment where it's like, you got to get up, dude. You got to get up. And you're like, oh, dude, it's so rad right here, man. It's like, oh, it's all happening right here, right now. I got to, I got to get up, dude. I gotta get up. Yeah, and it's like, no, you gotta get up, dude. We gotta go. We gotta go, dude. Nah, man. Look at that. Look at that. It's melting into the star. Ah. Gotta get up, dude. Gotta get up. Gotta go, dude. And it's like, it's hard. I'm stoked I'm free of the chair. I'm stoked. I wanna sit in that chair when I do this stuff, dude. <sighs> it's like I just entered a new dimension, realistically. If if you think about this in, in like a weird, a weird spatial reality is 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 sitting in the chair is like one two dimension maybe maybe this is three dimension right and then the the words travel through time and space and circle back in some song man maybe that's fifth dimension right there maybe that's fifth dimension djing my own my own like weird song thing you know it's like that it's like that oasis line right i'm a rock star tonight dude i'm here i'm a rock star tonight dude Got a microphone, dude. I can lead the nation with the microphone, with the microphone. You see, we can do anything we want, man. But the the thing that's holding us back is us, me. 
I'm the one holding myself back, right? Because I forget, dude. I forget that this is all this is all God, dude. Every bit of this is God, man. Every bit of this is God. And, and I forget. I forget all the time, dude. I just take this for granted, man. I just, ah, oh, you know, dude, whatever, whatever. And I, and I forget that that this is me having my the gift that, that God gave us all, right? And here we are, right? Because we can ride bikes with no handlebars. It's doable. It's super doable. We just got to fully be aware of what we're doing, right? But see that the fear, the fear will keep our hands on the handlebars. The fear will keep our hands on the handlebars because we forget that we need to pedal. Like you got to pedal. It's sort of like that rubbing your tummy, patting your head at the same time type of deal, dude. It's a, it's, it's more, it's not just lifting your hands off the handlebars, right? It's got a lot of things going on, man. It's got gravity and physics and momentum and and pedaling and wheel spinning and 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 the road and and the whole thing. And but you can do it. You just gotta you just gotta be launch. You just gotta launch right out of the thing and get get into the uh, get into the momentum of it all. Yeah. The evolution, man, the evolution of uh, of mind. I don't know, man. Just some stuff I'm, I'm thinking about. Let me see. What, what do you guys got, dude? What do you guys got there? I can't. I, I got to get some, I got some glasses, dude. It's the hips, dude. It's the hips, dude. Isn't, isn't it all the hips, baby, dude? <laughs> it's all the hips, dude. Yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those things. It's one of those things where like you realize that that you're trapped by your own. I like the new microphone too, dude. It's like it's real. It's real. You know what I mean? Like holding it, dude. Like you're holding it. See, that's what I mean is is you get it, you do realize at a certain point like how unreal it is because see the weird thing about the and this is one of the things I was I was talking to someone the other day, dude. They're one of one of the high frequency tribes been calling me on some life advice and and they're writers, right? And 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 one of the things that that like even though we're free of the trappings of this dimension and this this these this lower dimension, we still need to be tactily in touch with it, dude. Right? We still need to feel it, dude. We still, in order to really be free, but we really need to feel it, dude. And see, I think that's what a lot of it's been going on this year. Is is we've gotten a little numb, dude. A little numb to it, dude. And we forgot that like it's it's here. It's got weight. It's got weight. It's got it's got density. It's got it's got all the things that are living, right? See, I've never been one to very, very much view inanimate objects as non-living. I think I think life force is in everything. And and it was, you know, part of my like journey as, as a spiritual human being was denying the life force because I judged it as to be an inferior product, i.e., trash, pollution, you know, rappers on the street, all of that stuff. And I remember having my true what's going on, Kale? I remember having that true, like liberating experience where I was like looking at the flower and the, and the nature Valley granola bar wrapper, realizing they both came from God. They were both of this world and that, that the trash, the wrapper didn't come from outer space. The wrapper came from the same place that the flower came from, right? God's perfect world. And, and it's in that, it's in that sort of thing that we forget that God exists in, 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 in the physical as well as the supernatural, right? And as, as I think about it more and more, right? Like the, the, like I listen to pastor Paul McGuire, right? You can get him on, on podcast. He does his things all via podcast and pastor Paul McGuire is always talking about the supernatural power of God, dude, the dudamus, dude, the dudamus. And the supernatural power of God. See, like God can do anything. It's only us that limits God potential. And I talk about it a lot, like spare changing God. Like, oh, God, man, like, like, oh, man, like pay the phone bill, dude. Like, 
all right, you want a phone bill paid? It's like, it's like us right now. And I, I'm going to use the group us because we're all in this one thing together. It's like, we're all like, like we've given, I don't want to use we again either because it, but I don't want to use me in that we because I haven't given these people the power that they, they think they deserve. Right. Like, it's like the people that are here, like, oh my God, what about the, 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 the sauce? What about the, what about the passports? What about this? What about that? And I go, dude, God's got supernatural like abilities to do anything we ask him to do, dude. Right. But God's going to be like, dude, if if you want to bypass all this because you want a, a soft way out, dude, like, eh, I'm not that interested. But if you guys want, if you guys want to blow this all out to be of service to my children that haven't found me yet, then we can do that. Right. And it's that thing of like realizing the supernatural ability of God. Dude, God didn't bring us this far. God didn't get us here to like turn off the switch and be like, nah, I'm bored. I'm out. I'm bored. I'm out. Like, I think people think that, that God's like, God is going to get bored with us and be like, oh, no, no. You know, who's going to get bored with us? The devil, yo, the devil's going to get bored with us, dude. You know why the devil's going to get bored with us? Because he won't serve us anymore. You see, the devil serves us in a weird way. Right. Because we get to, I talk about it a lot. Like, I don't know what I want from life. I just know what I don't want from life. See, I spent a lot of time with the devil, dude. I spent a lot of time smoking crack and doing drugs and being a freak and a weirdo and, and just being an ult like failure basically. Right. So I rolled with the devil pretty hard, so to speak. Dude, lived in the sin, lived in all that stuff, lived in, lived in that, that darkness. Right where I wanted mushroom clouds to end it all where I, where I just was hopeless and without any sort of like, like, this is stupid was my basic thought. It's funny. I have the same basic thought now, but it's different. <laughs> I go, this is stupid, but not for the same reason. Right. And so, so, so I did all that time with the devil. Right. And I needed all that time with the devil to realize the grace and the glory of God. See, that's the thing with the fence sitters, the middle of the roaders, the people who won't take a chance. Right. Do you ever really get to like, do you ever really get to truly experience the grace and the glory of God? If you haven't really been taken to the mat and had God lift you up. Right. Right. Like, like part of the whole thing with God is being lifted up, dude. Like, you don't, if you're not, if you're, if you're just sitting there all vanilla out, not doing much with your life, not taking any chances, dude. Like, well, is it that special to get saved? Right. Right. Is it really that special? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I think for those of us who've experienced some darkness, really experienced some sin, really been like, really got in there and got down and dirty with it all, man. And then God's like, dude, you want to, you want to get away with that? And we're like, yeah, God, what do I got to do? And he's like, all you got to do is just ask me for, for some forgiveness. And, and you're like, all right, dude. And God's like, here, dude, you, you, you're done with that darkness. You're done with the devil. You're done playing with the devil. Is the devil done serving you? And you're like, yeah, God, the, the devil's done serving me. I'm fully done playing with the devil. And God's like, all right, here we go. We're going to, we're going to, you're going to be born again, dude. Right. But you're gonna, But part of the thing you got to do being bored again is, is give that grace to everybody. See, I think there's a certain level of like where I don't, where I won't go there. Cause I don't see how you can be a messenger of God and condemn people. I don't get how that works. Like, like people are like, like, we'll sit here and be like, you condemn other spiritual practices. You condemn other lifestyles. You condemn other things. And yet God fully gave you the past path to everlasting life through his forgiveness of your debauchery. Right? So who are you to judge someone who's gay or transgender or another religion or buttering the bread upside down? Who are you to judge anybody? Right? Because, because God gave, gave us a second chance. Those of us who were born again, who, am, so who am I to say that, that, that I condemn anybody? I remember when I was talking to, uh, I know I knew, knew this pastor when I was working at the, uh, at the, uh, at the rehab, right. Pastor Claude, dude. And, and pastor Claude was this full black dude with dreadlocks and the whole thing, like super cool pastor guy, dude. And I went to a couple of his services, dude, super mellow. And I asked God, God I was like, well, what, what about the gays, dude? Like, do you like the gays in the church and the whole thing? And he's like, if I don't let them in the church, how are they going to get saved? And I was like, it was like just so 
basic how he said it to me, dude. And it's that thing. It's like, if we leave, exclude people from the church, right? Or the God or whatever it is, how are they going to get saved? And that's my main thing with what I do here. Like no one's excluded, right? Because, and, and I don't sit here and tell anyone, anyone's, you're not wrong. You need to find God on your own terms, right? And the more, the closer you get to God, the, the closer you will get to the loving God I've experienced because God loves you, right? It's only you that, that, that blocks him off. It's only you that, 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 that keeps God in the veils, right? So I look at my own journey, right? I look at my own journey with, with God. And I, I always knew God kind of existed. Like, yeah, I was checked out of all the different practices. I ate the drugs. I did the things. I got the drunk. I did the parties. I did the this, the adventures, the whole thing. I knew God was out there. What God was or how God communicated with me, I didn't really know. And then, you know, I got sober, right? I got, I got like sober. And then I was like, oh, okay. It's not the drugs and the alcohol. They got me. They, they, they. They helped me because, right, they were that thing. They were th the, the convex of the thing. Like, they were the devils in mim mimicking God, right? So, like, that's why I come down hard on the whole, like, Joe Rogan's. I, everyone needs to eat mushrooms and, and take DMT, bro. The world would be a better place. No, that's the devil mimicking going, if you do this, you'll get close to God. And I'm not denying the validity of mushrooms and LSD and DMT. Like they're all like the wrapper next to the flower, right? They're part of the world. The thing is, is thinking that those are conduits to God when that those are just the devil tricking your mind into going, this is the shortcut to God. No, there's no shortcut to God because God doesn't need a shortcut. See, that's the big trick, right? Like there, there doesn't need to be a shortcut. God's right here, right now, always. Never left you, never will leave you. It's only you that leave God, right? So there's no, there's no, it's the Eckhart Tolle, right? Eckhart Tolle talks a lot about it too in The Power of Now, dude. You don't need to take lessons or stand on your head or read books. All you have to realize is you are consciousness, all you got to realize is God's right here, right now. You don't need a shortcut. You got to stop taking the long path. See, I took the long path. I took the long path with the drugs and the alcohol and the debauchery and rolling with the devil, thinking I was getting closer to God because the devil was dressed up as God, right? The devil was like, no, dude, dude, here, come with me, man. Yeah, bro, bro, come on, come on, come on. And I went, I was like, okay, cool, dude. I'm breaking the status quo. I'm going with you, dude. And then I learned it was a dead end street. It was a cul-de-sac. I thought I was getting on the interstate to God. I got into some cul-de-sac into some crappy neighborhood with broken buildings and rain and flooded gutters. And because the, the, there were so many leaves just in the street littered, dude. And I was like, oh my God, I thought I was on the interstate to God. I'm just in some broken down cul-de-sac with the devil just like... <laughs> Dude, you don't know where the interstate is, do you? And then I sat there, right? I was like, oh, man. And God's like, God never, God was down there with me on the cul-de-sac. Like, oh, dude, I got you, dude. You ready? You ready? You ready to do the trick? You ready to do the trick, dude? You ready to do the trick? You ready to ask for help? And I was, I asked for help. And who shows up? Joe and Dave in front of a liquor store. In the cul-de-sac of my life, Joe and Dave show up at the liquor store, dude. Boom, dude, God was like, Dude, no shortcuts because God was always there. The minute I was ready to accept the grace of God, it happened. Boom. There was no, it was instantaneous, instantaneous. I looked in the, in Joe Shaughnessy's eyes and God was just like, dude, you ready? Are you ready? I was like, yeah, dude, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, Yeah. Yeah, I can ride a bike with no handlebars. <laughs> uh, so it's that thing, man. It's that thing, dude. It's that thing. It's the monkey mind. It's the monkey mind constantly telling us the monolith's the answer. The monolith isn't the answer. It's the jawbone killing the ego. It's when, it's when the monkey realizes he has the tools to smash the ego, dude, and become a, like, interdimensional space traveler, dude, right? 
But you see, we were so close. See, that's why they that's why they brought us back. Because we we thought the answer was we were so close with all of it. And then and then we got brought back because we were in the cul-de-sac with the devil, dude. We thought it was we thought it was electric batteries and and space shuttles and 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 you know green revolutions and and fancy plastics that are biodegradable dude and smartphones and we were we were so close we were so close but we had forgotten to bring god with us man see that the, the devil had conned us and gone here i'll give you all the tools and technology and all this stuff to blast out of this rock i will give you all the tools just don't just and he didn't he didn't go oh don't bring god the devil didn't do that the God, the devil did the bypass move. The devil just didn't mention God. See, that's what the devil did, dude. And so we did that. We built all this stuff and bridges and hydroelectric dams and 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 Panama canals and and freighters crossing the ocean with trinkets made out of plastic from Japan or China, wherever the, wherever it is over there, right? We did all that, man. We got super close, man. Buckminster Fuller talked about it all, but we forgot. God, dude. See, God is the fuel for the rocket ship, man, because we're the rocket ship. We're the Tesla coils, dude. But we forgot with the God is the, the power, man, that fuels the whole thing. It's not the, the, the wires transmitting electricity across the landscape. That's not the power. It's never been the power. The power's always been God, dude. But we're so monkey mind that we think that it's, 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 it's coal-fired power plants and electric cars and, and cans of tuna fish and, and this and that and this and that. Not for, for remembering that all that stuff comes from the same place the bumblebee comes from. That no technology can be greater than the bumblebee, man. The bee. Think about the bee, dude. And we think we're going to beat the bee with a bunch of wires and cargo container ships and hydroelectric dams while the bee, the bee feeds us, right? Cause the bee was the bee. God gave us the bee, dude. It's like, yo bee. <laughs> and we forgot, we forgot that God was always here with us. See, we tried to build our way out of it. Like that was the great trick the devil, the devil's done through the, and we call them the controllers or whatever you want to call them. We give them so much power. It's like idolatry, right? Oh, it's the elites, the new world order elites, bro. Those guys. No, those guys aren't anything. They're just facsimiles of the devil's fakery. Oh, those guys. Yeah. Those guys are holding you back. Those guys are getting you. No, no. You don't forget those guys. The bumblebees got your back. The bumblebees got your back. The, the, the lamb with the wool on its back's got your back. The dug fur with the lumber for your house has got your back. The intact ecosystem full of the salmon and the clean waters got your back. Everything was already here. God gave us everything, dude. God gave us everything. But we thought we could build a better mousetrap. See, that was the devil's whole trick. Ah, build it, build it, build it, dude. We could have been traveling to other planets without building any of this garbage, dude. In fact, if you listen to what all those ancient people used to talk about... They did it all with cowhide teepees and, and, and sweat lodges. They were traveling to other planets. You think they weren't? You think those original people in those sweat lodges and those stone structures all around the planet weren't just blasting to other dimensions of time and space? Of course they were. But they were rolling hard with God, dude. But you know, the, the big thing is, is they've tricked us all, man tricked us all with the history it tricked us all dude the universe was contained in a mustard seed man the universe was contained in a mustard seed see we we tend to think that those those ancient people are in the past they're right here with us now too right 
All dimension of time and space exists right now. That's why quantum mechanics. That's why the whole universe is contained in a mustard seed, dude. I did that. I, that line has stood out with me since I was taking chemistry back in college. Like, what does that mean? The whole universe is contained in a mustard seed. I remember hearing, I remember my godfather down in Costa Rica in the 90s talking to me about string theory because he was some genius, dude. And he was hiding out in the jungles up in the, the mountains of Costa Rica, dude, wherever, wherever it is up there in the high mountains of Costa Rica, yeah, it's a little tundra up there with the bunny rabbits and the whole thing. And he was up there and I went and visited him one time He made my way up into the mountains with, with my girlfriend at the time. And, and Roger, his name was Roger. Roger's like explaining string theory to me. I never heard of string theory before. It's like new. He had some book, dude. He was like a genius guy. I'd get all these books sent to him, dude. I remember him explaining string theory to me. I'll never forget it, dude. Standing up in the, the mountains of Costa Rica, dude. Listen to my, my crazy godfather explain string theory to me and me be like, whoa, man. Because I was a super stoner then. I was like, whoa, bro. That's trippy, Uncle Roger. Like, wow, really? Whoa, dude. Yeah. And then he'd be like, go walk up to the bunny rabbits up in the tundra. Go get up on the tundra in the middle of Central America, dude. And get back to me about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I'm telling you, dude, we, we, we have separated ourselves from nowness. And all of it is contained here now. It's the monkey mind banging on the monolith, dude. We forgot we can ride bikes with no handlebars because we don't even need bikes, dude. We're superheroes. We're superheroes. But we forgot, dude. We put down our capes and folded them up and put them in the laundry. And we're like, yeah. Yeah, you're a weirdo if you're a superhero. Look at Jimi Hendrix, dude. Why Jim? What, what the? What was Jimi Hendrix up to? He was no hippie. He hated the hippies. Why did he hate the hippies? Why did all the gnarly musicians dislike the hippies back in the day, dude? Right? They all did. Hippies were a scam, dude. You know why? Because they were weaponized anthropology. See, Jimi Hendrix understood weaponized anthropology, dude. See, again, it's the devil, the devil using plants and stuff to dress it all up as like, like God, when God doesn't need plants to turn them on. God is the plant. I, I, I know it's sort of a convoluted way to look at it, dude, because you're like, well, yeah, dude, that's, that's why he gave us the mushroom. He did, but he didn't give it to you as a toy. He didn't give it to you as like some like, nah, I'm going to snap out of the thing and ah, it's the answer. No, it, it never was the answer. The answer was always God, but you had to go touch the devil, right? You had to go in. You had to go in and find out for yourself, dude. And see, most, a lot of us spend some time in that psychedelic bubble, like going, hey, this is the answer. And then some, somehow you break free and you get sober and you realize, dude, you realize that there's no drug on the planet that can touch being awake, being alive, breathing. Looking at the bumblebee, man, going, how does that work, dude? How does the bumblebee work, man? How does the bumblebee work, dude? Here, hold on. I got to I got to switch sides of the album right now. All right, same. Because I can ride my bike with no handlebars. No handlebars. <sighs> So anyway, ah, go read tip, tip your dog or, or don't, we don't care. We really don't care, man. It was funny. I was, uh, I was, I had this person on the phone the other day and, you know, they came through the pipeline here and I was like, you know, they, they paid for the first session. I go, look, man, like, you don't, you don't need to pay me, man. Like, I'll just talk to you, dude. Because, like, that's what that's why I'm here. I'm not to not put up paywalls, dude, on the whole thing. I just think it's trippy, man. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been watching these dudes do this hustle, man, where they pretend to be legit, but they're they're secretly trying to get paid, right? Like, dude. Uh, that's denial of God, right? Because this is the payment, just to be free, dude. Just to be free with this microphone in my hand. No, dude. 
best what's the best spaghetti you ever had i got this tricolor rainbow pasta right now it's pretty darn good dude it was funny so i had the uh the first time we served the uh the tricolor pasta like like two months ago dude right it's that like stuff you just slap in the water real quick i should i should i gotta start making my own pasta but uh so with the first night we did it, I, I served it to Owl. And he's like, I'm not eating this, dude. I go, what do you mean you're not eating it? He's like, I, I don't like it. What, I go, what do you mean? He's like, why did you paint the spaghetti? I go, it's not paint, dude. He's like, what is it then? How come it's got colors? I, and then I had to explain to him, like, why the pasta had colors. It was just this funny moment where, like, a little, a little child's like, why did you paint the pasta, dude? And now he's like, I want the, I want the colored pasta, right? So I'm into the, I'm into the colored pasta right now made with the, uh, I don't know. Solid stream. Yeah. I like the whole standing thing, dude. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some freak flag gear on, dude. I'm going to get my Jimi Hendrix on man, because it's that thing. Like, it's funny, like just being able to like move around it. Like, I don't know. I don't want to sit down, dude. I can't believe I sat for so long, dude. I was afraid, right? Monkey mind. Monkey mind said, don't, don't get weird. Don't get weird. You're a, you're a YouTube live streamer, dude. You're supposed to sit there like everybody else, right? Why is anyone, why is anyone sitting doing this stuff? Like, it's so weird now that I think about it. It's so strange. It's all so strange, man. All hell spaghetti. All hell Cardiel. All hail Cardiel. Yeah. No, I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty pumped about it all. And and it's because it's it's so hard. This life thing is so hard, man. Don't think don't think I'm sitting here telling you this is like easy. It's not, dude. There's chaos all around the place, man. You know, you have children, dude. You, you'll know what I'm talking about. There ain't nothing easy about having children in your in your deal. Cause right, they don't they don't comply. They don't care what you have to say, dude. I got a teenager, dude. <laughs> Telling me, dude. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I go, I get it. I get it. I was a teenager too, dude. I didn't get what my parents were saying about that VW bus until it broke down on me. Great energy tonight. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love. Well, it's it's that it's that thing as is. Like I said, it is it hit me. It hit me out of it, hit me sonically. Sonically, it, it hit me yesterday. And I heard the words, I heard the lyrics, and I realized that that more so than we think, we are are so much more powerful than we give ourselves any credit for because we are created in God's image, right? If we're created in God's image, right? That doesn't mean like we're we're soft. It doesn't mean it does, doesn't mean we we like we're like 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 getting punched in the face either. Though that's that's solid every now and then too to wake yourself up. It, it's the thing of of realizing that that we so shortchange ourselves as human beings, right? Monkey mind, monkey mind all the time, all the time, the monkey mind, monkey mind. What are the other monkeys doing? I was listening to, I don't know where I was listening to. They were talking about this experiment, right? I didn't know where, where was I? What was I listening to it on? I want to say it was no agenda, but I think it might've been Tim pool or something. They were, they were talking about, there's this experiment, right? Where they put a bunch of monkeys in a, in a, enclosure and they had a ladder they had a ladder and the, there's a bunch of fruits and bananas and stuff on top of the ladder right and so every time that the monkeys would try to climb the ladder they'd hit them with a high pressure hose right soak them and the monkeys would get mad didn't like the thing and so they, they eventually they stopped climbing the ladder because they would get soaked right and when one monkey would try to climb the ladder they would the, the, the all the monkeys would get sprayed with the hose and the monkeys didn't like it dude right and then then the next part of the experiment was once they got the 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 monkeys used to getting sprayed by the hose, right? And and if they went for the ladder, they would get sprayed by the hose. They stopped going for the ladder, and then they began to replace the the monkeys one by one. And so they would replace the first monkey, right? And so the first monkey's like, oh, there's like fruits and treats up on top of the ladder, fruits and treats on top of the ladder, and they and they 
would try to climb the ladder, but all the other monkeys were like, dude, we're going to get hosed down, dude. We're going to get hosed, bro. Like you can't go up the ladder, dude. And they'd beat up the monkey, right? You're not going up the ladder to get the treats, dude. We don't want to get hosed, dude. Getting wet sucks, dude. And so they eventually replaced all the monkeys and all the monkeys, second generation, none of them would climb the ladder anymore, right? We're like the 10th generation monkeys, dude. That have, that have forgotten, dude, that this is all some sort of wacky experiment, dude. And it's a wacky experiment put on by the devil, dude. And God's like, dude, just climb up the ladder, get the fruits. All y'all, if all y'all stop getting worried about being wet and every one of you climbed up that ladder, dude, experiment crashes. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, we're all in it together. There's There's no one down here who's like all like, yeah, I'm free of it. We're all in it. Even the gnarliest one, even the, even the dude in the elevating in Tibet floating on his sound frequencies on the side of a mountain, dude, he's down here with us too, dude. You know, he just gets to levitate next to the side of the mountain, dude. That dude's sweating the Chinese machine guns just as gnarly as anybody, dude. And yet he knows, he knows. He knows I'm gonna go up the ladder to get some fruits and vegetables. Dude, no one's gonna see me. I can levitate, levitate. So we're all in this this thing together, man. But you see, God keeps telling us, man. God keeps showing us, dude. This is all fake, dude. It's all fake, fake to the core, and it's ultimately super real at the same time. That's the trick that's going on is realizing that it's so fake, it's real. That it's fake, it's real. It's like that. It's like, it's like one of those, the chicken of the egg, right? The chicken of the egg, dude. Which one is it, dude? Does it matter? Does it matter? There's eggs and chickens. Does it matter which one came first? No. See, that's the thing. That's a, like one of those other things that proves God's existence, the chicken and the egg thing, dude, right? And ultimately it doesn't matter which one came first, the chicken or the egg, dude. God was always there, right? God was always there. So Yeah. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, and so can you. So go listen to that song. Get back to me, Flowbots. And uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up. We did our hour. Fired up. It's 7.51. Right on, Thut42. From Madrid, dude. Madrid, yeah, dude. You guys got it gnarly over there. Everyone's got it gnarly right now, dude. Especially those Canadians, dude. <laughs> Wonder what the Canadians are thinking tonight. Your boy Trudeau putting the screws to you, yo. But anyway, we don't want to get into that, dude. Stay in the God lane. So um, I'll be back at 11 o'clock on the Lego channel, just chilling. We'll be sitting, putting Legos together on the Lego channel at 11 o'clock. Come join us. Hang out with us. Do some Legos. We just casually talk and click bricks. That's on the other channel. Link down below. And um, we'll be back, dude. We, we get some freaky outfits for this thing. To, you know what I mean? And let our freak flag flies. And just, just remember, look. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, God loves you. And the way you show that you understand that God loves you is you forgive everybody else who doesn't know that God loves them, right? The only reason people are doing any of this stuff is they forgot that God loves them. And if you know God loves you and God forgave you, then just forgive everybody, right? It's super hard. I get it. People are freaks, weirdos, doing bad things. But if you can forgive them and love them, you're the rocket ship. You're the Tesla coil. You're riding your bike with no handlebars, baby. You know what I mean? So, uh, what's happening in Canada? Nothing. Just say it. Just the Canadians are a little clueless about how they're getting the screws put to them pretty heavily, dude. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Do your research. Bull cut power hour. That's right. Kale flowers, my friend. Love you, Kale. So with that said, be nice to everybody with the uh, with the uh, the name tags on. Be kind to everybody. 
just chuckle at it all a little bit, dude. Love everybody. Be kind and uh, God bless. Be strong. Be faithful. Find God. Do it your own way. But God's waiting there for you. There is no shortcut that you need to take. You just need to be here now. With that said, I'm out. Good night. God bless.